Hey, buddies, Potemic Whiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Machinki. Now, this is going to be a brutal, horrific difficulty playthrough, because what we're going to do here is we're going to go in and start a new game, and we're going to be playing on a huge map with a high density of hills, with a high density of forests, but with a low density of industry and towns, and then a high density of lakes. So that means we maximize how many obstructions and difficulties we're going to go into, and we minimize the opportunities that we have to actually make money. And that's why we're calling this Brutal Difficulty. I also have the game set to Hard Difficulty, but the only change I made is that trains are allowed to reverse at the end of stations. So what the hell is Mashinki now that we have the game set up? Well, it's basically like a little transport tycoon kind of game where you create stations at resource locations and then use trains to transport goods between those stations. But the trains actually occupy real physical space, so they can't actually drive through each other. So you have to kind of build two way tracks and, and let bypasses and all that sort of thing. And it's really kind of a logistics management game, which is why I really like it. Now, there's different kinds of... It's, it's a really interesting game because it doesn't use just traditional money as a resource. Uh, typically, in these sorts of transport games, you just have cash. Cash is, cash is king, so to speak. Um, there's only one resource, and it's usually money, whereas in this game, there's actually multiple different types of resources. For example, if you transport wood to a sawmill and then to a tool shed, you will get wood tokens, which can be used to build more advanced buildings and trains. Okay, so we have a quest here, transport 50 passengers to any city. And we are going to want to do that. Excuse me. Now, this looks like a perfect candidate. Leeds here has a lot of population, but it's kind of congested here. I'm going to try and find, I'm going to go into the construction mode here and see if I can find a fairly well populated town that has a bit of room around it. To, you can see over here, it's just empty terrain. Uh, it's pretty brutal terrain because we have to make trains. Ah, here we go. Here's a perfect candidate. We can get a train going from Edinburgh to Doncaster. Now, of course, it's not that simple because look at the terrain these stations, these places are on. This station over here is going to be fairly straightforward because I can just pull it up right there. Like this. But something I need to keep in mind is if I hover my mouse here, you can see this is at 13 height. And then this station, this town over here is at around 15 height. But there's this huge valley in between them. So I'm going to want to have to negotiate my way through that valley. So I'm going to use the terraforming tool here to kind of flatten out the land a little bit and you can see you can click on corners of the terrain for example if I hover my mouse over this corner you can see how it says 17 here if I click it'll go down to 16 and then the shape of the terrain will change okay let us extend this station another piece here and I think stations can be six long so this is almost full length Ah, uh, you know what I've done here? I've put myself in a bit of a spot of bother. Well, I guess these trains are just... This train is just going to go back and forth. So this, this should actually be fine. Usually I would want to have a way to come out the back of the station. But I did actually turn off trains having to turn around, so that should be fine. Okay, let's go ahead and just lower this valley here so that we can get a... um. Now, this is pretty expensive, but it will—it is worth it to do this. So here we go. We have a fairly flat path out of this town now, and we want to minimize how much we go up and down, um, realistically, uh, wherever possible. So now we have a fairly straight path to the next town. So we'll go straight along here with our railroad. We'll go straight past up to here. So now we need to build a place for the actual station over here to go. And this one's at 14. So this is going to require a little bit of navigation of the construction. There we go. So I need I need six I need six tiles in a row. There's four, five, and six. And now we need to navigate our way down this slope in an even fashion. 
and a couple of little bumps there, that'll be fine. So we'll place our second station over here. There it is. Now something interesting is when you have the station selected, you can see which houses it's hitting. It's not quite hitting all the houses in this town. So what I can do is I can build extensions. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait on the whole extension thing until we have the actual railway infrastructure built. But as you can see, we can now directly connect these two towns and it will cost me a little bit of money. So now if we had a train, we could send trains between these two stations. But unfortunately, we don't have a train because there's a couple of things we need to get that set up. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a depot. Um, I'm going to place the depot here. This seems like a good spot for it. Yeah, right there. Now I'll put it right here. This is nice and snug. And so this is where my trains will come from to run between these towns. So let's get our very first train here. This will be a 260 Porter. And I will use, I believe because I have a station length of six, this means the maximum length of my trains can be just, just a smidge over six. So we're going to use the coach cars here because they're more efficient. They carry eight, 18 people with a length of 0 0.92 and a maximum weight of 19. So it is just about one weight per person, whereas this slightly over 1.5 weight per person, even though they are about half as long. So we want to keep an eye here on the length of the train. And so five passenger cars, that should do for most of the game. Five passenger cars. So we're going to go to... We're going to head over to Doncaster and then we'll come back to Edinburgh. But we do have some things that we need to... We're not, we're not quite done yet because if we want to make maximum money from these stations, what we need to do is we need to build waiting rooms. And what the waiting room does, if you can see the station catchment area, it's fairly small. It captures, you know, three different houses. But if I put this waiting room here, it extends the area that the station can capture, which makes it able to get more passengers from this town. So we'll we'll drop a waiting area for the train station there. And we're going to want to do the same thing over at this station. Now you have to select the station, go into the extensions for that station because it is on a per station basis. And then I will put this and this will also capture almost the entire town. There's a house up on the hill there that won't be captured. But almost the entire town will be captured now. And now if we turn on speed here, you can see our little train will come out. I'll go into normal mode now that we're finished constructing. The little train will come out. It'll go over to this town. And you can see passengers are jumping out of their houses into the station to be picked up. Now you, you can go at different speeds and you can also, uh, you can also be in the train, which I think is kind of cool. And here we go, we turned around, we're heading over to the other station. We have 15 passengers on the train right now. And uh, there goes our little depot. And then we'll zoom out here if I can remember how to do that. There it is. And you can see over here we have 37 passengers. Now let's have a quick count of our money. We have 136 coin. And now we have 151. So it looks like we picked up uh, 1415 cash from that, which is pretty good. So you get one cash per person, which is pretty decent. So we're going to get 37 from this transfer. And kind of what we have to do now is play the waiting game on this brutal difficulty game is we need a train to get over here and deliver to this station again. And um, one of the really interesting things about this game is actually the development system, the city development. You can see here that I delivered 15 passengers to Edinburgh. So the city has grown uh, by 15 passengers. When it hits this 480x mark, the city will actually get bigger and build new houses and buildings, which is really cool. It's really, really brilliant. I, I, I'm i a huge fan of it. I think it's I think it's brilliant. And I, I, I love the idea of developing a town over time. But you can see, the early game, it's, it is a lot of waiting because we are playing on a very hard difficulty, which means we do not have a whole lot of money. And so we're going to be sitting here for a bit. Okay, we did deliver our very first passengers, which does link us up here and get the plus 100 cash from that mission. Now, 
We're going to want to connect more towns if we can. Now we could connect to this network, but there aren't really any towns nearby. London is a little bit too small to really be worth connecting. Really, you want to look for towns that are fairly close together with fairly high populations. For example, Kelmsford is 16 pop and Brighton is 15 pop. So these are viable people to connect. However, there is an issue. Look at that height difference. That is a pretty significant height difference here. You can see this is 22. This is almost up in the 20s and this one is down in the 10s. So that's a 10 height I would have to navigate. I would need a lot of money to be able to do this. Now I can borrow money, but it is important to remember that that's going to cost me interest. It's going to cost me interest if I get a bigger loan. I think in the interest of the game, I may take out a loan here. Oh, there's a there's Dudley and Bradford. I think I'm going to connect these two towns as well. They're relatively close together. Not only that, but I have an easy I have easy access to coal because if I deliver coal to this toolworks, I will get some uh, some upgrades. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a station here. I'll put it right there. I'm going to just borrow money slowly as I build this. So I'm going to want to go straight up the hill here. Um, what, at what height am I going to build a station? I think I'm going to build a station over here if I can manage it. Can I bring this up? I can. So I'm going to have the station sit right here. On this left side of the town. So I will need a little bit of room for that. And one more click. So there's the station. I think it needs to be one longer. So that's five. I'll make it one more long if I can. Quite expensive to do this, but quite worth it too. Now we need to navigate like this we need to navigate our way over to this location and we will we want to follow the lay of the land if we can where where the dips and the raises are so we're going to kind of follow up we're going to try and get up to this point if we can here so we're assuming we're building down from here because this is a relatively straightforward section of track uh let's see what is the height difference between this is 19 and all the way down here is 10. So we'll need at least nine tiles to navigate our way down here. A fairly large ramp here that's coming. Oh, there goes all my money. I'll need to borrow more. I'll borrow up the maximum amount. So we have 900 cash in the bank. There we go. Oh, I overbuilt here. That's unfortunate. So the train is going to have difficulty climbing this, but that's not the end of the world. So we'll put a piece of track here and then we'll connect these two. We will head up this ramp. We will want to turn here. We want to follow the lay of the land as much as possible. So we're going to want to turn at some point up here. So I'll build up to here and see if I want to turn there, I'll need, I'll need some flat track here. So let me go ahead and edit this. Can I do it now? This should allow me. Hmm. I think perhaps I need to bring this forward a little. And then I should be able to turn up into it. There we go. So we have these two towns connected as well. We are going to want another depot. I'll put this depot over here. Like so. 
and I will say I want a 260 Porter with one, two, three, four, five coaches, and it will go from the town on the top of the hill to the town on the bottom of the hill. But we also need two other things, and that is the extensions for the waiting rooms to capture all of the population here. And now this is this is generally speaking how I like to play the game. I like to build, you know, a couple cities at a time, let the money roll in, get a few cities connected up, get them developing. Because remember, the uh, the cities develop as you move passengers in them. So we'll unpause the game here and we'll let it negotiate itself out. You see the train, uh, it's going to have trouble going up this hill. Maximum speed of 10, which is pretty slow. But it's not the end of the world. It gets it. Up, it gets up the hill fairly quickly, and once it's up the hill, it won't have too much trouble. You can see its speed picking up there. But you can see our uh, our money is draining very quickly because we have a very large loan. So we are going to want to start repaying that, and that's going to be like the big thing that we do in the first episode is repaying a bit of that loan just to reduce the amount of um, reduce the amount of cash deficit that we're running at because we want to we want to cut down our, our our loan insurance we want to pay it off right because that's eating into look at that that's 32 cash that entire year but look look how quickly this is ticking down every few days we're losing a piece of cash so that's why we're going to work on repaying that loan very slowly so we are down to 1800 Good. And every time we repay the loan, the interval between when we pay the next piece of it goes down. But also, because there's no there's no cost associated with taking out the money, essentially what we're doing is we're efficiently banking money, right? So technically, I have 350 cash here because I could pull money out of the because I could pull money out of the loan right now if I wanted to build more things. Now I need about I need about a thousand money to connect any two stations. You know, so it just it's just an efficient way to play the game, right? You drop you drop your hot you drop your money into the bank. Because otherwise I would be paying uh interest for having it in my in my cash flow. So we're slowly cutting down our loan share. We've already paid more interest this year than we did last year, and it's only August. In fact that happened around July. So you can see the train fills up pretty big, and the great thing about these trains is, as these towns develop over the years, these trains are going to be able to handle the capacity increase as these towns get bigger. You can see it only has about half its capacity right now going either way. Yeah, but a little, almost half this way, just about half going this way. So as we... As we move through the game, our... The, the size of these towns will increase, right? So I, I want to try and keep one of these open to see if I can show you ex the exact moment it happens. Um, I'll probably keep this Doncaster open. Maybe I'll hide it up here for a second and we can kind of keep an eye on it. And I'll try to remember to show you when that town grows so you can see what it looks like. But yeah, as these towns, as the towns develop, because the trains aren't using their full capacity, they have spare room so they'll be able to accommodate the train the, the town's growing without having to add more trains to the route, which is pretty cool. Okay, we're con we're continuing to pay off the loan. Minimizing our exposure to debt. We cost us 82 last year. That's really brutal. So we really need to get this down below a thousand. I'm going to eliminate the debt entirely is going to be my goal so that we can... Uh, we can run on pure profit. Otherwise, otherwise the, the loan share, it just kind of eats your money throughout the game. Uh, I like to eliminate my loan fairly early in the game. Now, there is an opportunity cost associated with that. I could be using all this money to build more stations. And, you know, there are those who would argue that you would get a better return here. But I think I like to just play, play this way, you know, get my loans paid off, operate on profit, screw the bank. Okay, so Doncaster is almost grown here, and I can show you that soon. We're already significantly reducing our debt. We're down to the initial 1,000. So hopefully here, as we continue, we'll be able to bring that down further and further. Uh-oh. 
I would, maybe I was a little bit aggressive there. There we go, okay. Because if I fall below, if I go into negative tokens, my trains will slow down and stop operating properly. So that's kind of dangerous. I believe this station is actually too short. I need to go in here and I'll add a, add a platform there. Okay, we're down to 900 on our loan. Doncaster. Okay, the next time that the train comes to Doncaster, the town should grow, and I'll be able to show you that. So it should be here in a moment. We're down to 800 on our loan, which is really good. Okay, the train is coming in. I'm going to slow down time a little bit as we wait for it. Okay, so you can see here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 buildings, which are producing 21 passengers, which translates into 15 passengers and 21 uh, cash. So let's see what happens here. Boom, it's dropped off. The town went over its limit. Did it not grow? Huh. The town was supposed to grow. I guess it didn't happen for whatever reason. This number multiplier went up. The town was supposed to grow. I guess maybe it didn't have room. Do I need to make room for the town maybe? Let me see. Maybe I need maybe I needed to make room for it. I'll make a little bit of room. For the town to see if it'll grow next time. Like this, I'll add a little kind of suburbia area. Oh, there goes all my money. I'll borrow a little bit of cash just to... So the town should have somewhere to grow. That's kind of, a, that's kind of concerning, because usually the towns grow, no problem. Hmm. Maybe one of these towns will grow? Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen that not work. In my entire time playing this game, and I've put a lot of errors into this game. Uh, so here is Brighton. Now, Brighton's almost ready to grow as well, so let's make sure Brighton has some room. Um, I'll do a little bit of renovating of the terrain here. There, okay, Brighton should have room to grow now if it once it hits its threshold. Let's continue to repay. I'm really surprised. That's... I feel like the game just made a liar of me. <laughs> um, whoops. Okay, you're going to pick up these passengers. Do you... I wonder how, how much speed do you keep going up? Yeah, you pretty much lose all your speed straight away. It would be better if there was a bit more of a run up here. It would probably get up the hill without losing all of its speed. But it's not the end of the world. Passengers are being transported. And that's all that matters. So if we watch Brighton, Brighton should go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 buildings. It should go up from this. Wait, it already grew? What the hell? These towns are supposed to grow. What's going on here? The game is making a total. <laughs> the game is making a liar of me. It's like, oh my god. I swear, I swear I'm not making this up. I swear to god. All right, what happens? All right, we're, we'll watch Chelmsford as well. And um, I just hands in my hands, in my, hands in the air. I swear I'm not making this up. I swear towns are supposed to grow when you deliver things to them. 
Is it because I'm watching them? Usually I don't watch. All right, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna close this and we'll just wait. When it's about to grow, I'll close this and like look away or something. I'm really, really confused. They're supposed to, um, well, well the numbers over here did go up, I suppose. So that does make sense. That is consistent with the town actually growing. If this one is 45, then it didn't grow. Well, it's 40 now. Hmm. So the next delivery to Kelmsford should grow it, and we can repay some more of the loan. We've almost eliminated our debt. We're down to 450 debt, which is pretty good. Now we are quite a few years in, so I mean, there's a, there's a sacrifice we're making here. For long-term profitability, we're neutering our development short-term. But I, I just, I like to play without debt. That's like my personal, my personal way of playing. I like to eliminate my debt fairly early into the game. Okay, train two. You're going to come along now. Okay, now this city should grow. There, look, it happened. There's a new building over here. Did you see it? It grew a little bit, okay? So over, over the course of the game, your towns develop and grow. Okay, we're down, down to 300 debt. And now we can look into dipping into that debt and building more infrastructure. But I tell you what, that's pretty much the start of the game. So I'm going to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of introductory look at Mishinki. We will be playing more of this. I'll probably do, I don't know how long I will play it, but I'll probably play it until I get bored. And uh, that'll be that. There's a couple of towns over here worth connecting. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that though, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.